word. Okay, so those are my uh, 10 outputs and my um, 14 inputs. And they're in binary. Now what I want to do is look at my analog input and output. So on this PLC, I have two analog input channels. So I want to see what they are. And a good practice always is to save your project once in a while. So I got to do more than one thing at a time. <laughs> it doesn't like it. Uh, but it looks like it's saved. So now I'm trying to get my device configuration, PLC1. And cross-reference general. Okay. That is not happening. Device view, network view, topology view. Okay. What was that? It's an AQ, okay. I was trying to do this at home and I couldn't remember what I chose that to be. So. Uh, I'm thinking something else should pop up there, like how everything's configured. PLC data types, watch and force tables online, program local modules. So I don't have anything in the local module except that PLC, which is a DC, DC, DC. Um, program blocks, we will write program at some point. I will write the program at some point. We have a main block, which I think I did something in. I need to change that. Change that reference or it won't compile because I changed the tag. So it's probably looking for another tag. So I'm clicking and waiting. Click and wait. Now we will also do this with Alan Bradley. We'll set up a uh, Alan Bradley that we can actually wire to. We need to uh, make sure we got 24 volt DC or relay outputs. And then we'll set up our HMI so we can control it. So I'm going to change this tag and I think, oh, it changed it for me to output A. So that's, I put one line in my network when I was going online to test. And oftentimes you do that to make sure that uh, everything works the way you think it should. Um, devices and networks really not let me configure what I want to configure. That's okay. All right. So that's my main block. Now, anytime you make a program change, you should go in and compile. And I want to say it's under tools. It's not right. Nope. Oh, maybe it's right mouse click on that. 
There you go. So if I right mass click, I should be able to compile. And if it's happy with its hardware software, then um, you can choose hardware changes and software changes. Well, we're not changing the hardware, so we could probably do software only changes or software rebuild all. You can have it do hardware and software in case something in your hardware has changed. So let's just do software rebuild all. So it's going in now and it's doing its error checking, make sure everything looks good and it will give me errors if it doesn't. Okay, so I got no errors and no warnings and that's good. If you do get an error or a warning, you have a little error that will take you to that part of the program. So that's my inputs. Now what I'm trying to figure out is my analog inputs and outputs. That's what I'm not sure of. And since I've already clicked on PLC tags, it's down at the bottom of my screen. So I can get back to the tag table because it's already open. If I wanna to go to the main program block, it's already open. If I wanna to go to the configuration file, uh, it's already open. Is that what I want, properties? That's what I wanted right there. <laughs> I knew it was in the right place. I just didn't click on the right part. So I've got my digital inputs. I've got 14 digital inputs, 10 digital outputs. I've got my analog inputs. And I got channel I zero. And it looks like the channel address address is IW64 uh, and it's set up to be zero to 10 volts. And this does not look configurable. I think it comes set up that way and there's nothing you can do about it. So I've got channel zero and channel one which are both set up to read zero to 10 volts. So my tag is IW64. Well, my channel address is IW64 and IW66. Okay, so if I go to IO tags, this is what I've got. Um, I can go in and actually name them. Oh, look, one, one way to do anything. So this would be uh, analog N1 or analog N0, if I will. And it's IW64. I can put it in the default tag table so I'll see it. And this is a default tag table. And I can put a comment, channel one input. No, channel, in log in channel zero. Now I will have to see how I have to wire this up. And I can go down here and say in log in channel zero. or channel one, I should say. And I can go in and put a comment on all these. Now, somewhere in here, I've got my analog output, which I'm guessing is this one. So if I go back to the general tab and I scroll down, I've got an analog Q1 signal board and I've got analog output as channel zero and IO addresses. So 
So start address is 80, end address is 81. It is uh, voltage. Plus and minus 10 volts, analog output type. This one actually is configurable. I can configure it for current or voltage. Because it's going to let me do that. If I do it as voltage, I'm plus or minus 10 volts. Uh, and that's really all I can configure. Analog output, general. So if the CPU stops, it's got a substitute value, so you can tell it if the CPU goes to stop, what do you want it to do? And either keep last value or put in a number. So depending on your device, you want it to either keep or, you might want to keep the same output. So it's a voltage output up to 10 volts plus minus 10 volts. Okay, we might come back and change this configuration later when we know what kind of voltage we got. If I go to the IO tags and I scroll down far enough, I get back to that, which is analog out. There is only one channel, default tag table, and I'll go ahead. So it's QW80. So my comment can be voltage or current out, depending on config. Okay, and if I make my comment window wider, I'll see all of it. There you go. And I can put these in a, I can make a tag table for it. I can put it in the default. You've got so many options with a PLC. It's just a matter of figuring out what it'll do and then as you program, as you add to it, you can figure out even more. Um, so that's what I'm going to do in terms of the PLC. And then what I want to do is on the HMI for each of these output tags, I want to be able to change the values. Now I should be able to put in a window that pops open and I can, and I can actually type in a value for my analog output. I want to verify it works before I go with something live. So I want to set up a little circuit and test that, hey, if I change my analog output to a certain value, I get it. And uh, with the inputs, the voltage in, I should be able to uh, put zero to 10 on analog zero and one, because I want to know how they're wired up. And then I can see what it reads on the HMI. So I don't have to be on a computer. I can basically map this stuff with just a PLC and an HMI. I can figure out what to do. That's sort of what I want to do goal-wise. We can do the same with an Allen Bradley and an Allen Bradley HMI, as long as we got uh, the right thing. And then we can go down to the MPS line and figure out each station's inputs and outputs and what everything's doing. So we can basically build our own map. And if we want to, we could write a program on the local PLC that actually controls that. But I would probably save this configuration as a default and then call it up. And then Anytime I build one of these PLCs, I've got it as a baseline. And then I can go in and, and set up what I want. But that's what I wanted to do today. Um, so I'm going to stop the recording.